Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to do, um, how to sync sound and merge your clips together in prepping. If Say you have a scene where you shoot your, your film and you have the sound shot separately, because usually on set you're going to have, uh, if you're shooting a, a film, a short film or feature film, you're going to be shooting, the, the camera department is going to be taking care of the images while the sound department is going to be taking care of the sound. And the slate is what kind of lines those things up. Though Marcus Light, in fact, here will show you. Um, first of all, I'm going to import some footage here. Do Control I to import. I'm going to go to my, go to a, um, a folder where I've got my media and my audio. I'm using proxy media, but this works just the same if you're doing high quality or proxy media. I'm not just don't don't worry about. I'm not getting into that right now. I'm just going to be showing you how to sync your footage, whether it's high quality or whether it's proxy, is the same. So I'm going to go import the folder for the video here for this day's shoot. And I'm going to import my audio. Control I to import and select the audio and import my audio. So my already, audio has already been named. It was um, was named by the sound person. So I know which audio matches up with this. If it doesn't, you know, usually on set, the sound person should be naming their files as well. If they if they don't, then you just kind of have to you'll have to listen to your audio and see which ones match together. But we got sound and video here. I'm going to open one of these video files here. And you're going to see a slate. So the slate is going to have the shot number on it. This is scene one, take two. So this is a shot number here. That's your, that's your shot number or your scene number, as they call it. As we play through this, uh, the camera assistant marks the shot visually. So we're going to use that mark right there to time them up with the sound department's audio. If we go to our sound department's audio here, and we double click on the, uh, one of these audio files here and load it into the source monitor. You can see some audio waveforms. It looks like there's uh, probably the clap noises right there when that slate claps. So we're going to use those two things to mark to sync up our our footage with the uh, with our audio. So I play this like right before. This is probably where the number is red. Let me zoom up on this. Plus plus. Speed. Scene one, take two. Scene one, take two, and then the marker that happens right afterwards. So that marker lines up with this visual right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a timeline. I'm going to put my footage in my timeline. I'm going to select that footage in there and just delete it. Uh, now that I've got this timeline here, I, I like to drag those out of my folders. So I have that out of my folder. So I still have my audio, video, and now my timeline. I'm going to rename this, sync sound, whatever you want to call it. But now I'm going to open up my video footage here, and I'm going to grab all my video footage, Control A to select it all, and I'm going to drag it down into my timeline. And you want to make sure that these are done in order. So to make sure they're in order, what I'll usually do, let's, let's undo that is I will arrange these by name. So it does like an alphanumerical order pattern down here. So it goes, uh, the scene one take one was corrupted. So I have scene one take two, take three, scene one alpha, which is a new setup here. Scene one bravo, which is a new setup. I'm not sure why they jumped from B to H, but they did. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at that and see how it goes. Let's see, yeah, for some reason, oh, that's, uh, yeah, for some reason this jumps from uh, from one bravo to one H, and one, one, H, one hotel, and I'm not sure why. But anyway, all right, so I'm going to grab all my, all my footage here, and you're going to grab the top one first, as long as it's arranged by name. See, we don't want to do it backwards. That's backwards there. We want to do it in order, so the sound is going to be in order as well. I'm going to grab my file from the top here. I'm going to drag it down inside my timeline and drop it there. I'm going to hit Shift Plus while I'm in my timeline, increase my track height so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And by the way, whenever you're shooting a, a short film or a feature film, typically it, it, this is very common. So the very first frame that you roll when you punch record on the camera, the very first frame that you record when you punch record on the camera is going to be a picture of the slate. And the slate's going to be open unless that is if, if there is sync sound belonging to it. If there's no sound, which is MOS, minus optical sound, uh, that basically means that there is no sound, and that means the slate is closed. But since it's open, this is the first frame I see right here, uh, that means that there is sound belonging to this uh, to this shot here. You'll see some instances on, on this, uh, while we start singing this word, that, that, doesn't, that won't have sound. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through this, press play, and I'm going to stop this. Uh, I'm going to have my fingers on JKL, J to rewind, K to stop, L to forward. And I'm going to get right before this one opens up. But J to rewind, K to stop it. And I'm going to arrow to the right, going forward one frame at a time until I see that go boom. Right there is my first, that's my first sync mark right there. Now I'm going to go to my audio up here. I'm going to double click on my audio. And here's the list of my audio. I'm going to double click on my first audio file here, which is scene one, take two. So scene one, take two, this, that matches up with my audio right there. Double click on it. If it doesn't, if these aren't named, uh, then you can just double click on these in order and listen to them. Speed. Scene one, take two. And that's scene one, take two. I'm going to arrow back here. I want this on the very first frame, get a little bit of pre-roll here. Let's zoom up, plus, plus, and I'm going to arrow to the right until I hear it go right there. You hear that little click noise right there? That is the first frame of the, of the audio. I'm going to hit I for endpoint. 
And I could put an endpoint on my timeline if I that way if I if my playhead gets moved. So right here in my timeline, that was the first frame. Right there was the first frame. Uh, I could put an endpoint just to be safe. That way if I move my playhead and unintentionally, uh, I've got an endpoint. It'll drop the audio file right there. So now that I've got that done, I can hit period. It'll drop my audio down inside, and and this is um, and this is synced up. I usually do a quick little test. I'll kind of forward into the footage here a little bit and see if the lips match up. Salt. No salt. And it matches up. Okay, this is a little bit longer audio. But when they said cut, the film cut first and the audio cut afterwards. So I'm just gonna trim this backwards just to get rid of that excess on there. And it doesn't get in the way of my next video clip. So now I'm going to arrow down and go to my next edit here. L to forward. Get ready. And K to stop. I went past it, so I hit, I'm hit. i going to hit arrow back until it opens up. And arrow forward until it goes click right there. Nice and solid. That That's where my audio file is. So this is scene one, take three. I'm going to double click on my scene one, take three. Play through this. Speed. Scene one, take three. And there it is. Let's arrow through until I get right to that clap. Put I for endpoint. I didn't put an endpoint on my timeline, but I'm fine because my play is right where I want it, and period to drop it in. I'm going to trim the audio back. I'm going to arrow up back. And one thing you can do, you don't have to do this, but some editors like this. They like to have, hear that little voice at the beginning. Speed. Scene one, take two. So that, that's fine. You can, arrow, you, can, you can drag that backwards if you wish. You don't have to. Uh, like I said, it's kind of the preference of the editor or the assistant editor like this as well. So we have complete audio over this. Now you just don't hear blank at the beginning. You hear... Speed. Scene one, take three. So you hear the shot number as well. But once again, you kind of play through it. Just make sure that the audio is lined up. Add salt or add pepper? And that lines up, that, that syncs up pretty well. All right, let's do this one more time here. So press play in my timeline. It goes past. I'm going to go J to rewind, and then I'm going to arrow forward till it hits that first boom right there is where it hits. Uh, by the way, if you want to do, use shortcuts, I'm going to do Shift-1 to jump back to my window here. Uh, arrow down and Shift-O to open up my audio. Uh, plus, plus, plus to zoom up, and let's play through this. I have L to forward a little bit. I can hit L a couple times and fast forward to get to the this audio here. 1A, take 2. 1A, take 2 endpoint on that first sound and let's see if that was the same on the visual here that is 1a oops and I grabbed the wrong one so I got to go to uh, scene 1a take one I don't know why I grabbed scene 1a take two but Air speed. scene 1a take one that's the right one endpoint see and that's why you listen to these so you know it belongs to the right clip here so now I can trim these if I wish trim that one backwards to meet the end of the beginning of this and trim this one here to kind of make it the same length. And right now I have my snap turned on, my magnet, so it snaps to the edges of these things and makes it uh, uh, perfect to the frame. All right, so I'm going to continue doing this until I get to the end. Uh, but one thing that let's, let's notice here, I'm going to arrow down through this here. I'm going to arrow down through this here and land on one toward the end here. I think the final scene three right here. Scene three, scene three, take one. They made a mistake here. They there's no audio for this. I remember that, that when they shot this, this was MOS. It's just some B-roll at the end. Uh, it's just some excess uh, footage at the end. But uh, there is no scene three, take one. So that slate should have been closed in front of the... So somebody was uh, slate happy and went ahead and did that clap anyway. But this one is going to be MOS or without sound. They shouldn't have done that slate, that, uh, that, that slate clap because if an assistant editor is doing that, this is the job of the assistant editor to do the syncing and merging and prep it for the editor. If that, if, if the assistant editor sees that there, sees that clap, they're going to start digging through their stuff looking for audio and, the, and they're, they're not going to find it. Then they're going to have to check back with like the, the, the sound department or something and the sound department can finally come in and say, oh, you know, we, we didn't we didn't roll audio on that. Uh, that's that's what the sound logs are for. That's what the camera logs are for as well. Uh, just so that can be all confirmed to make sure they didn't lose some footage. All right, I'm going to sync the rest of this and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. Okay, everybody. Um, come back. I've had I have everything in my timeline synced here, and I notice here that there is actually one of these that they slated it properly. If you look at this here, the hand, the fingers are through the slate, and it has scene one H take one. This was like a pickup shot that they did, but this was is MOS. This is without sound. So uh, so this one they actually did it properly slate the end one. They must have had a, an AC switch or something like that, and got all slate slate happy and did did the clap anyway. And they even did the clap outside of the camera, so that wouldn't be any good even if that was the case so anyway because yeah you got to be able to see that visual of the slate clap and one thing you'll notice about these slates here is look how close these things are to the camera these things are fairly close to the camera uh, each time with the except exception of here you can see this okay but usually this slate should be at least 
that close to, well not that close about that close to the camera so that so that so it can be read so it can be easily read there's really no reason why that slate can't be put closer to the camera and then they just have to do a quick focus pull and then when they pull it out of the way they throw the focus back to back to back to the actors okay all right so the next part here is i'm going to go back to my main project window in fact i can close these bin windows control w or command w on a mac control w controls those window closes those windows and let's start merging these things together and getting this prepped for the editor. We have three different scenes here. We have scene one, two, and scene three. So uh, let's start let's start merging these things. And the one way you can do that is I'm gonna zoom up plus 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 zoom up a little bit here. You can select both these clips here, and you can right-click and say merge clips. Merge clips is gonna ask you what you want them named. Already this is, is named like one, uh, one take two. I'm just gonna name this one take two. Just like that. And that's what the name of that shot is, Merge. We're going to put this in a Merge folder after we get through merging all these. So Shift-3 to jump to my timeline, arrow down. And once again, you can uh, click a, a drag a marquee over these, right-click, and say Merge Clips. And this is going to be Scene 1, Take 3. Hit OK. And there you go, and it saves it up here. We're going to show you the organization after we're done with this here. So Shift-3, arrow down. But let's say I want to do a shortcut where I, uh, there's not a... There is unfortunately no shortcut associated with, with mergings, but you can create one though. So I'm gonna go up to edit, I'm gonna go to keyboard shortcuts, and under keyboard, and, and this is under, if you're on, on, on a Macintosh, if you go up to Adobe Premiere and click on Adobe Premiere 2020, it will, you, that, that's where you'll find your keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna go under the search engine here and type in merge, and notice there is no shortcut associated with merge. So I'll just move over here and click under shortcut, Click on it again, and it brings up a little shortcut thing asking what you want. I like Control-Alt-G or Command-Option-G on a Mac uh, because there's no shortcut associated with that has Control-Alt-G for anything else uh, within Premiere under the default shortcut. So I'm going to hit OK. And now that I'm in my timeline here, my timeline is selected here. Uh, I can just hit D, and it will select the clips where my playhead is. It'll select both video and audio, so I don't have to drag the marquee over it either. And now I'm going to hit Control-Alt-G. It'll bring this open, and I can arrow back delete that and hit OK and it's named my file there. So shift 3 to jump to my timeline, arrow down, letter D and control alt G and this is going to be 1A take 2. So I can arrow over, clean this off or if, if it's named something else up there I can just name it whatever I want to now. I can just type in the new name. Shift 3 and I'm going to keep doing this here until I get to the, so I, I will come back in a second when I get to and show you what you, I do on the files without any audio because we're not going to be merging those. Those two that are shot MOS do not need to merge. So I'm going to merge the rest of these until I get up to that point, and then I'll stop and show you that. Okay, so I've merged several, and I've got down to this point where I have the MOS here. And if you hit D and Control-Alt-G, there's nothing to merge, so it's not going to try, it's not going to do anything. So what you can do is, I, what I like to do is I'll grab this clip here, because I want to save all these clips here that I'm organizing for the editor here. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to hold down control so right now I've got this hold of my mouse. I'm going to hold down Control or Command on a Mac, hold it down, and then I let go with my mouse without letting go of Control, and it will bring up this window. Now I, now I can let go of Control. So I let go of my mouse before I let go of Control. So once again, grab your clip, drag over. Now hold down Control. Right when it's hovering over this, hold down Control, let go of your mouse, and it will and it will ask you and it will ask if you want to create a new subclip. Uh, and I'm going to say yes. We're going to name this subclip. Subclips is if you change the in and out point on these things. Uh, I, I haven't on this, it's just a full shot, but that's fine because I, I like doing this so I can rename the file, hit OK, and now I've got a little a file over here that has no sound associated with it that is my MOS file, and I've got it named. So arrow down, and let's get the rest of these, and I will come back when I get the, the rest of these named and show you where we're at there. All right, as I'm finishing up here, I've got everything else synced. Let's grab this last one, drag over, hold down control, because this doesn't have audio. So hold down control, let go of my mouse without letting go of control or command, and then I can let go of control and, and name this as I wish. All right, now that everything is over here in the uh, window, we're going to organize this for the editor and prep it for the editor. So I'm going to grab, and I know typically this is the way you would organize things, by scene numbers. Uh, so I have we have scene one, scene two, and scene three. So all the shots within scene one, I'm going to grab those. I'm going to select the top one, hold down shift, select the bottom one here. I'm going to drag it down, hover over a folder, and drop it into a folder and call this scene one. I'm going to select all my scene two files here. So I put all my scene one in there, and then I'm going to grab all of scene two, drag it over, hover over a folder, and call this scene two. Grab everything that's in three, it's just this one shot, hover over the folder, 
and call this scene three. All right, now if I want to put these uh, in alphabetical order, just hit the name there, and it's an alphanumerical order there. And uh, now, now if I'm cleaning this up and I'm sending this to an editor, I don't want to send them this timeline right here. In fact, what you could do, you don't have to, but I, I kind of like doing this for, for editors if I ever do assistant editing. I like prepping a timeline for them. So what I can do is I'm, I'm going to, first of all, hide all these into a folder and just call them like raw assets. I'm going to take the timeline, I'm going to take uh, the footage, uh, all the all the raw footage, because the editor doesn't need to access this stuff. All the editor needs to access is scene one, two, scenes one, two, and three to start editing. I'm going to drag these to a folder and just call this raw assets. And there we go. Now let's uh, create a timeline. I go under scene one. I'm going to drag a file down to this new item icon and create a new timeline. Now I can close the sync sound one because they don't need to see that. So Control W or Command W will close that. Uh, that will close that tab. And I've got a clip down here that I've dragged inside. I can delete that now, and I can call this one Scene One. I can call it like Scene One Edit or Scene One or something like that. Now I've got that in the folder. Some editors prefer their 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 timelines out of the folder, so it just depends on what the preference is. So we could drag that out if we want to. And I've got Scene One, and I can just right click on this one, and we can go Duplicate, and we'll call this one Scene Two Edit. Now I can duplicate this one as well, or even just copy and paste. Control C, Control V as in Victor to paste it, and I can change this one to Scene Three. There we go. Alpha numerical order here, and there we go. So Scene One folder plus the edit, Scene Two folder plus the, the timeline, Scene Three folder plus the timeline, and they're all ready to go. So now when they're ready to go, and the editor editor opens up their project here, they can double click on the Scene One folder. They put this under Icon mode. Range view, uh, list view sort, and now increase the icon size. And there you go, with this timeline one open, they can start double clicking, start doing in point, out point, period, dropping it in, and, and start their editing process. So well, that's it for syncing and merging. One last thing here uh, a lot of people ask me, why don't you use the automated feature inside of Premiere to sync your audio? Because um, oftentimes, what if say you're shooting with a DSLR and you and you have an audio recorder going at the same time, uh, when you shoot that, the DSLR will oftentimes have uh, an internal mic on the camera, and, will, and you'll have waveforms on uh, that shot, and then you'll have the waveforms from the audio file. And what Premiere does is uses the, those waveforms and matches it up to to your good audio. That's a really nice feature in Premiere. I will go over an episode when we when I use that. That's really helpful for some circumstances, but in feature film, they they pretty much never do that uh, because the sound department, first of all, or be the the camera camera department first of all look at this when they shot this on this was actually shot on film on 35 millimeter film and that film does not have audio on it if, and oftentimes if you shoot on a red camera an alexa camera a professional cinema canon camera oftentimes the if the camera is capable of shooting audio the camera department oftentimes even just shuts off the audio so it will not have an audio track because um, the only thing the camera department worries about is getting images. The only thing the sound department works at, worries about is getting sound, and never shall the twain mix until post-production. So, and also you run into issues if your camera is far, far, uh, really far away. It's, let's say you got like your your camera on a 300 millimeter lens, and you're zoomed into some some subject a distance away, and they have a wireless mic on them. Those waveforms aren't going to match because it's because it's going to take maybe up to like um, um, an eighth of a second. I'm not sure what it would be for that sound to travel to the camera, and it's not going to be perfect. Those waveforms will not put your audio perfectly in sync. So some audio people are very, very picky about that when they're doing film. They do not want to try to do that automated waveform matching process. Anyway, if you have any questions, please post them. Thanks for watching.